Hey, welcome back everybody. So today I want to talk to you really quickly. This is going to be a short video, but I've had some people asking questions about this and even gotten themselves into a little bit of trouble with the balancer. So for this engine, this is basically a stock 350 Chevy. It's, it's going to have Vortec heads. It's mildly modified. It's got screw in studs some aftermarket updated stuff but nothing real crazy so we bought a balancer and this balancer we actually got this at AutoZone I don't normally buy there but it was the weekend but they have a pretty decent balancer that they sell for a 350 Chevy and it's just a stock type balancer but they're pretty good um, so a couple things that I would caution you about number one when you put this on you never want to put the balancer on there and take a hammer and pound this thing on. I've seen guys do that and you're beating on this thing. Um, man, I, I don't recommend that at all. The other thing is, is you always want to put a little bit of oil on here. So take a dab of oil, make sure that this hub here has engine oil on it. And also inside, you can actually put the, some oil on the hub here and also make sure that the inside of this has oil on it. Then you just take your balancer and I also want to show you something about the timing here once we get this on. <clears throat> but you take your balancer, you just get it on there and you find the key and it, it'll start on where that key is and then you want to get yourself an installation tool like this. You can get these anywhere. You can rent them at AutoZone. We purchased this one, but basically what it does is it has a big nut on it. And this allows me to take and press that balancer on there without any problems. So we're gonna screw this into the crankshaft here, get it in there so it's secure. And then you just run the nut up And that nut, as you run it down, is going to press that balancer on. So again, you never want to beat on it. Always take, and you can use a big crescent wrench or a pipe wrench or whatever. And we're just going to take this guy, and then you just simply run that nut down on there. It's also a good idea on this type of an installation tool to put some vice grips or a crescent wrench or something here to keep this from getting too tight in the crank because then it's hard to get out. So I like to hold this while I'm adjusting that nut and you run it all the way down until you feel it stop solid against that cam gear in there and then you're in business. Right there it stopped dead. I felt it stop. It's no longer going. This gets really tight and you know it's all the way on. At that point, just loosen up your puller and you are in business. Okay, so the next issue that we want to talk about, and this is really where I'm going with this, is you got to make sure that you get your timing mark in the right spot on this balancer and I'll tell you why. Chevrolet actually had two different timing marks on these engines over the years. One of them, as you look at the cover, is over here at about one o'clock or so. You got a timing tab here and your pistons at TDC when your timing mark is right here on the zero or at least it should be. The other type of timing mark puts the timing mark way over here right at about pretty close to 12 o'clock. So there's about that much space between top dead center. I mean, in other words, they put the mark in a different spot on the balancer and they put the timing tab in a different spot. So it's a crapshoot as to which balancer you get. It used to be you could specify what year balancer you wanted and you'd get the right one. Nowadays it seems like it doesn't matter what 
year balance or you asked for, you never know where the timing mark's gonna be. So here's what I recommend. Number one, you'll notice I put the balancer on before I put the cylinder head on. Then you need to bring your engine to top dead center. Now I put a bridge gauge on here and I would recommend this and I've got a couple of studs in the front of the crankshaft so I can bar the engine over. So what I want to do is I want to bring my piston up to top dead center. Now I'm going down in the bore right there, so I'm going to come back the other way. And this is again, this is our number one cylinder. So we're just going to bar the engine over until I get to the highest point of travel here on my indicator. And there it is, that is top dead center. Now, this is exactly what I was talking about. My timing tab is here and my zero is actually right here on my tab, but my mark on this balancer is way over here. So we got about that much, we're about that much off. But what happens a lot of times is, you know, you guys building your engines or guys building their engines, they'll put this together and they don't do this. And then when they go to time their engine, they're looking at this mark and go, man, this is way off. This, this thing runs terrible when the mark is over here. Well, of course, if it's over here and the mark is at zero when it's up here, right? You're gonna be, your timing is gonna be off by that much, which is a lot. The engine will still run, but it'll run like doo-doo. Um, so what you need to do, now that I am at TDC, what we wanna do is we wanna take and we wanna mark our balancer right here, is right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put a mark right where my zero is, and then I'm gonna bar the engine a little bit because I wanna be able to get to that. We just back this off a little ways. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to put a mark straight across that balancer. So I know, and then I always like to go down here too. I want to be able to see this with the timing light. Okay. So now I know for sure that I have dialed in this balancer. And when I am on my zero up here, right there, I am at exactly top dead center on my piston. I highly recommend that you do this, guys, when you're building the motor because you never know. And even, even, you know, the timing tab could be bent or differences in aftermarket tabs or whatever. This could be off a few degrees one way or the other. So you want to, you definitely want to put this at TDC and dial that in. And um, that way, when you go to time it, everything will be, everything will work out good and it'll make sense. So. I hope this helped you. This is a real quick shot, but I've had a lot of people having trouble with this issue, not being able to get their engines timed. So be aware there are two different timing marks on these from the factory or from the manufacturer. Uh, just make sure you dial it in and everything will be fine. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you very soon, I promise.